Hey guys, today we're doing DIY fall style trees, and you could make these completely out of Dollar Tree supplies. Let's jump into it. I'm going to be making a set of two, but of course you could just make one or however many you'd like. You'll need one plunger per tree. But I decided I wanted my trees to be a little bit taller, so I used a third dowel that went to a plunger from the Dollar Tree to make two extensions, one extension for each tree to make my trees a little bit taller. I have this scrap piece of wood here that I'm going to be cutting in half to make my two bases. So here I'm just marking the halfway point on the board as well as on this extra dowel rod. Just so I know where to cut to cut these in half. If you do not have a piece of scrap wood to use as a base, you could certainly use a small Dollar Tree sign or plaque from the crafter square. The top of each plunger is rounded, and so I'm, so I'm going to have to trim off that rounded part so that my extension will fit flush up against uh, the top of my plunger to add the extension. Now, if you're not going to add an extension, you can skip these steps completely. I'm just going to attach my extension using wood glue and staples. Now it's time to weight down our base, and to do that, we're just going to fill the plunger end with a filler, a heavy filler. I'm going to be using pinto beans, um, but you could use rocks or any other small um, heavy items that you have. Only half of this bag of pinto beans is going to fit into this plunger bottom. And so these bags of pinto beans are very affordable, less than a dollar. And so, I mean, it costs about 50 cents to add this filler, to weight it down, to make our base heavier, to keep our tree from tipping over. You'll just use some hot glue to attach your um, plunger base to your piece of wood to create a sturdy base for our tree. When you pick out your plunger at the Dollar Tree, try to get one that to where the plunger, the rubber part, um, isn't too warped. And um, the more perfect it looks, um, the more stable your tree is going to be, the more the, the straighter your tree will be. Here's a quick breakdown of the leaves that I used. Now you could completely use Dollar Tree um, picks, 
for this. And I would actually suggest that. I found out, I figured out that, that the Dollar Tree, I felt, was the better value. Hobby Lobby was having 40% off of their fall florals when I went. And so th their floral picks here, these uh, maple leaf picks, were $5 each originally, $4.99. But 40% off, that made them $3 each. The Hobby Lobby picks had about 13 leaves on each pick, but the Dollar Tree ones had about 12 leaves per pick, and they also had these little berry clusters, um, and they all, each of them had like an extra thing on them, either a cluster of berries or a miniature gourd figure or a tiny pumpkin. And so, while the leaves were slightly smaller on the Dollar Tree picks, and the quality was a little less, um, I still feel like it's not a big enough difference to warrant a $2 increase on each pick. So if I had to do it again, I would definitely would have picked up more of the Dollar Tree picks and not have gotten the Hobby Lobby picks, but it's still, they still turned out very affordable. I will talk a little more about cost at the end of the video. I used four picks total on each tree, two from Dollar Tree and two from Hobby Lobby. On each pick, I would trim a little bit of it off, like a couple of the sticks I would trim off, and then I would leave a grouping together of about three. That way, instead of a few clusters of leaves, you have them more spread out, and it just makes for a more full look. On each tree, I took an entire pick and um, attached it to the top for it to be the top of the tree. So you're going to want one pick to act as the top of your tree. I used hot glue and masking tape to attach each pick to the tree.
I decided that I didn't want any leaves um, going up the first half of the tree from the bottom of the tree to the halfway mark. So I made a mark at the halfway mark on my tree trunk so that I would know where to stop and make sure not to put um, any branches down past that part. This was the first tree that I made and the second one definitely went faster and these were actually very easy to make and didn't take much time at all. You're just going to continue around the tree and add in leaves and little branches wherever an area looks empty. Now here's an idea to make um, your own branches. If you need one of your um, little sections of your pick to be longer and to stick out further on your tree to make more of a statement so that not all of your leaves are very close to the trunk, you can use pieces of a wire hanger to act as an extension for one of your little branches to make it go further because this whole thing is going to be painted and we're going to be using a filler and so it's going to look fine to use an extension if you need to to make any of the branches stick out further. I have these plungers sitting on my table this morning and while I was um, cleaning a little bit I heard a noise in another part of the house and my first instinct was to grab one of these plungers. It was the closest thing at hand and um, after the fact it was just something that had fell and I thought you know your first thought is is someone breaking in and so it just it cracked me up that I walked into another room with a plunger in my hand, like, what is that going to do? So here you can see I have a yardstick standing up next to the tree and they're three feet long, of course. So this tree is about four feet tall. The top of each plunger, it's, it's a pretty sharp um, ending there and I wanted to make it a more gradual end to our trunk connecting into this top branch. So I'm just going to wad up some paper and use tape to attach it to make more of a triangle, more of a gradual um, 
slope going up into that very top branch. Now, before I started this project, I had every intention of doing paper mache over the entire trunk and um, also onto the branches that I made out of hanger. Um, I was going to crumple up tissue paper and use Mod Podge to cover the trunk to give it more natural lines and to make it look more like bark before painting it. And you could absolutely do that. I feel like that would look good, but I felt like I could create enough, enough texture without having to put all that work into it, just using the hot glue. So where each little branch is stuck onto the tree, where they end, um, I'm taking hot glue and I'm going to go down the branch to create lines to create a bark look. I'm also using the hot glue as a filler wherever there are sharp edges just to fill in any gaps and to make it more of a natural um, transition from surface to surface. I think that using the Mod Podge and attaching the tissue paper would look good, but I'm just not so sure that it would be worth all that time and effort. And doing this did turn out good, and so I would definitely do this option again.
It definitely is a little bit of a hot mess right now, but the paint is really going to bring it all together. I'm using the Truffle Paint by Waverly Chalk Paint, and it only took one coat. You can go up the branches a little bit if you'd like with the paint, but it's going from brown to brown, and so it's not necessary. But it is necessary to paint the white branches that are made from the uh, clothes hangers. You could go over it with some black or gray or some other um, contrasting colors to give it a little more dimension, but I felt that the brown looked fine as is, and so I just left it with the brown paint. Now the bottom of our tree, to me, still just looked like a plunger. So, to other people, maybe they wouldn't know that it's a plunger, but it's like I can't unsee that it's a plunger. So I'm going to um, use some moss, and if you had some more like brown moss instead of the green, I think that would look even better. But I got this moss from the Dollar Tree, and you're just going to add some hot glue, go all the way around the edge of the plunger, and then in some spots go up the plunger, the rubber base, as well. Occasionally you will shake the base to um, so that any loose pieces of moss will fall off and you can reuse them. And then when you're done, you'll go around the base, trimming away any pieces that are hanging over. I just love these. And really, I don't feel like they even look like a DIY unless someone just got up very close to them, picked them up, and examined them, would they suspect that you made them yourselves and that they weren't store-bought. So these trees cost me about $10 each to make. You can find a shorter version of these trees online for about $20 each. The ones I made were about four feet tall, and that size will run you about $35 each online. You could make them shorter and solely use um, Dollar Tree leaves. That would make them cheaper. But on the flip side of that, if you invested just about five bucks more, you can make them taller, use more leaves, and make a five to six foot tall tree. Um, the taller you make them though, the wider you're gonna need your base to be so that they don't fall over, that base piece of wood that we use. 
but the five to six foot tall trees online are 50 to over a hundred dollars each. So the savings here is pretty big. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed this DIY. And if you do, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Hope y'all have a great day.